My name is Mitch Conrad, and I play bass guitar. Okay. Now, Mitch, what is, who is your favorite musician and why? My favorite musician is Mike Einziger from Incubus. He plays guitar uh, in that band, and I don't know, I've really admired him for a long time, uh, just because he, the riffs and progressions he writes are really unique, and um, he's obsessed with effects pedals as well. And uh, when I played guitar, before I played bass guitar, it's one of the main things that I tried to do is learn as much about pedals and changing the sound of the guitar and uh, to pretty much whatever you want it to be. And so that's why he was my favorite and still is. Good answer, good answer. Do you remember the first song you've ever learned on guitar? First song I ever learned on guitar, uh, I do remember. It was Billy Talent's This Is How It Goes off of, his, off of their self-titled debut album. Uh, I don't know. It was a wicked song. Okay. Did you uh, teach yourself how to play guitar? Or? Uh, no, my grandfather actually taught me how to play guitar, uh, basically. And then uh, I had another teacher for a bit named Paul McDougall, who played in a few different bands around Toronto uh, a while back. But in terms of bass guitar, I am completely self-taught. Okay. Uh, so did you grow up with music? Was music something... Uh, nature to you? Yeah, it was. Uh, my, my grandfather who taught me guitar uh, as well as piano, he, um, he was a music teacher, a high school music teacher. And so from pretty much from when I could walk, he was teaching me piano and whatever other instruments. And my dad didn't play any instruments, but he's a huge music fan. So I always grew up around uh, rock music and he always made sure I listened to good stuff. So I was brought up in a very musical household. Uh, let's go to the Cardinal Dream. Like, how did you first get into the band? I first got into the band through uh, through Rob. Uh, we were in class together at Humber in our radio program, and I had jammed with the guys a few years back, and uh, I knew they were around. And, and this past summer, when they needed someone to step in, and Rob gave me a call. And although I have to travel. Uh, quite the distance from Toronto up to Bolton to jam with the guys, it's totally worth it. And uh, we clicked right away and I've been with them ever since. When you first heard of um, the sound of the Cardinal Dream, what did you think of? Immediately, uh, it was it was bands that I, I knew of but hadn't really listened to yet and it really forced me to listen to them. Uh, initially I, I heard a lot of influences from, from Thrice, um, Circus Survive, um, Incubus definitely and that that's actually because of my favorite guitarist and that was one of the things that really Bonded us together off the get-go was our mutual love interest for Incubus. It's pretty much all of our favorite band Okay, so let's let's go to you know on stage kind of thing, you know, do you have um, Do you have do, like when you're on there what goes through your mind? Uh, at first, it's a little bit of nervousness uh, so you are nervous. A, uh, before you get on stage, there's always some nerves to uh, to shake out. But once you're up there and you just start feeling the music, pretty much all I'm thinking about is A, don't screw up, and and B, enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. Do you have, uh, like when you're up there, you just, do you blank out kind of thing or just get it going? I kind of just get it going. In terms of blanking out, uh, the only thing I try and blank out is just the, the crowd. Uh, if, okay. if there is a big crowd there, they can sometimes be intimidating. Just uh, want to clear your head and get in, your, get in the zone. Okay, so um, what make, for you, what makes a successful show? I think a successful show is one that you play well, uh, we play the songs well, and I think it's, it's a success if at least one person comes up to you and said they had a good time. If there's one person that had a good time in the crowd, then that's that's a win for the band because that's one new fan and uh, that's that's what we want to do is just touch people with our music. Mm -hmm. and so if we can do that to one person, then we've we've had a good night. How do you feel that? How, how do you relate to your your fans? You know, what kind of thing. Um, how do you think the Cardinal Dream relates to their fan base? Well, I think we relate to our fan base because we're we're real. We want to create music that's emotional and uh, and something that strikes a chord with with the listener we feel like there's a lot of music that's over processed and rock music is I don't 
don't know. It's 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 crossed over too much with with dance and, and stuff like that. And while like I love that stuff, um, I want to connect with our listener and our audience on a deeper level than that. And and bring the music that I grew up loving, stuff that touched me emotionally. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully we can do that. Well, that's pretty good. So um, do you have any pre-game or pre- pre-game or post-game, you know? Rituals that you go through with the shows? Uh, pre-game ritual. Yeah, pre-game. Pre-game ritual. Uh, I'm. I think I'm the one in the band who likes to have a few drinks before going on stage. So I have a couple beers, maybe a shot, loosen up a bit, uh, and then we always just get together, have a little huddle, and tell each other to have a good show, and then we get out there and rip it. And afterwards, it's uh, no post-game ritual yet, but mm-hmm. just relaxing and and okay. whatnot. So. What does uh, what does the cardinal dream mean to you? Good question. What, what does it mean to you? The cardinal dream means to me means the world to me. It's um, it's a tough question. What does it mean to me? I have no idea. No idea. Just so much emotion you can't. Come it's up. uh yeah it's it means it means a lot. It's uh. It's uh, it's the most significant musical venture I've been a part of in a long time, mm-hmm. and uh, and I hope that things can turn out for us. So it, yeah, it means it means a lot. Saying that, you know, a typical question would be, where do you see you guys yourself in the future? Let's bring it down to perspective here. Mm-hmm. Where do you see you guys in in five years? In five years, I hope I hopefully can see us having a. I think we would be successful in five years, and realistically, if we had uh, a steady fan base, um, put out a couple different records, in five years I would hope to have at least two records out by then, um, with solid tunes that people can connect with, and that I think we would be successful in in five years if, uh, if we had just that, if we could tour and people came out to our shows that we didn't know. And so in five years, I see us exactly there, if we keep at it. And uh, the, at the rate we're going, uh, I don't see that not happening. Mm-hmm. This might be a tough question, but why do you as an individual do this? I do it because I love doing it. It's hard to explain, but growing up with music and, and having it a significant part of your life, all I've ever wanted is to be part of a project or a band that um, that I think has potential, mm-hmm. and I think this is it. Beautiful, beautiful. One last question: um, What is your favorite hockey team? Oh, Toronto Maple Leafs, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Anyone who doesn't like the Leafs, I don't like them. Except for my dad; he's a Habs fan, so oh, I, I have to love him. I have to love him. But that's it. Fair enough. Good answer. Well, thank you for this. No problem. And there goes my notes.